What's up guys, welcome to Jew Whiskey, my name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Bunnehoven 12 Cast Strength 2022. Stick around. Okay, so today's whiskey has been requested many, many times. It might be the most requested video of the past maybe year or so. We finally got Bunna 12 Cast Rain 2022 on the shelf with us today. Uh, the hype beast is in, and needless to say, it's long overdue. I do apologize for the wait. Um, please accept this apology card. It's a puppy, and he's very sorry. So Bunna 12 Cast Rain 2022 is Cast Strength. Bit obvious, let's start over. So Bunna 12 Cast Rain 2022 is the second 12 year old cast strength release from the brand. The first one came out back in 2021. It was very hotly anticipated. And I do think it went over quite well, generally speaking. Although I do know that a lot of people were kind of let down by it. At least that's what I hear. I never tried this stuff. Of course, I would have picked it up had it hit the store shelves here in Taiwan. It never did. Anyway, uh, a year later, this one came out to much more fanfare, much more positive reception. So a lot of people online were ranting and raving about this stuff, seeing how great it was, saying it was this huge step up from the 2021. So it just seemed like everyone and their grandmother really loved this one, and that in turn got me very excited to try it, because I love Bonahaven, I love cast strength whiskeys, I love grandmothers. In a wholesome way. They're wholesome. Listen, you thing is, I waited and waited for the 2022 to hit shelves here in Taiwan, and it just didn't come. So finally, I made the bold move to order it in from the UK. I paid extra for shipping. To be fair, not too much extra. It was a shared order with a friend. But anyway, I got it in. I popped it. And I was feeling pretty good about myself. And then unsurprisingly, a week later, this stuff does hit the store shelves here in Taiwan. And of course, I find out that I overpaid for it, which was very annoying. So what I did, I waited for night to fall on a rainy night. Uh, I went outside, climbed to the top of a local mountain, I took my shirt off, I shook my fist at the skies, and I cursed the heavens. Which, in retrospect, bit of an overreaction. Yeah, it was, it was $10. Anyway, back to the whiskey. This one was matured in first and second fill Oloroso sherry barrels. We also have some bourbon casks in the mix, although apparently not too many. It's unpeated. Uh, our ABV on this one is a little bit higher than it was on the 2021 release. And apparently, this one is more sherry forward, more fruit forward. And all of that sounds like a whiskey that I would very much like to drink. So let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So our ABV here comes in at a very healthy 56.6%. For context, the 2021 release came in at 55.1%. As usual with Bona, we have no chill filtration and the color is natural. So I really like this look. I've always had a soft spot for the Bona labels and packaging. I mean, I've always had a soft spot for everything Bona in general, but I do think that the color scheme on this one is a little bit smarter. It's a little bit more slick than the standard line. Um, so yeah, the colors, the label, the fonts, everything here works for me. I'm gonna give this four out of five for presentation. We do have non-chill filtered natural color on the front of the label. We've got a little blurb on the back that introduces the distillery, but it's nothing too indulgent or obnoxious. That's fine. It gives us some very, very basic tasting notes. So for the most part, they keep things pretty simple and the look is good. I can't complain. On the nose, things start off with a spicy, earthy sherry. We have almond and cherry type notes in here. There's leather, there's milk chocolate, there's dried red fruits, there's red wine tannins, there's orange oil in here, kind of like a very dark orangey note. There's plenty of berries, we get cinnamon, we get spice, we get resin in here. I would say it's dominated by that dried fruit, that spice, and that nuttiness. The palate and finish are very rich, they're very full. We get chocolate, baking spices, butter, earth, resin. There's big sherry, fruit compote, tannins, and leather. I also get kind of like a cinnamon butter toast, like a crispy toast covered with butter. You sprinkle cinnamon and sugar on top, um, or maybe like a really crispy croissant or like a berry turnover. Lots of bakery stuff. It's a long finish. 
Okay, so really cool whiskey. This one is not just the 12 year old on steroids. It does do something different. That being said, if you like the 12, the flavors here are going to be familiar, but I think the cask play is better here. Obviously the ABV is better. So broadly speaking, I'd say this is a huge step up from the standard 12. And speaking of the standard 12, which I love, I go way back with it. It's probably one of the most influential whiskeys I've had along my journey. Um, but I do find myself revisiting it less and less. And that's because I feel like it's lost a lot of the earthiness that I used to enjoy in the older 12s. And what's nice about this one is that it does give me some of that earthiness that I miss from the standard 12. Uh, obviously with the higher ABV, our flavors pack more punch. And there's even a couple other elements that I miss in the standard 12 that we are getting here. This one gives us a beautiful tart counterbalance to the sweetness and it gives us some heavy spices. So really we've got a lot of great things happening here. We've got that spiciness, that fruitiness, that tart counterbalance, the leather, berries, these huge flavors, never gets too sweet. But it's still very much a familiar Buna as well. It's got that classic, earthy, slightly coastal, sherry forward profile that we all love. So really, I think I needed this bottle because I admit my faith in Bunnahaven has been kind of wavering lately. Like I said, I'm less into the regular 12 these days. I've got a bottle of the 18 year old on the go that I have some thoughts on. I'm sure to review it eventually. But this bottle, this bottle reminds me why Bunnahaven is still one of my favorite distilleries. So my score here is gonna be 91. This is a truly great whiskey. It's one of my favorite recent discoveries. Of course, you do need to be into sherry in order to appreciate this, but I think if you've already bought this or you're thinking about buying this, I think if you've already clicked on this video, you're probably a Bunna fan and I'm sure you're fine with sherry. And if you are a Bunna fan, you are missing out if you're not trying this one. Not only is this one of, if not the best whiskey in their current core range, it's also one of the best bang for buck cast strength buys out there at the moment, at least when it comes to UK pricing, which brings us to value. So obviously I just said it, I think this is a great value buy. Currently in the UK, this sells for just over 60 pounds, which at the current exchange rate is just under 80 US, which I think is an absurd price. Now I do think this sells for a bit more in the States. It certainly does here in Taiwan. In Taiwan, this sells for just about 75 pounds or just over 90 US, and that's fine with me. I think very few whiskeys can compete with something like this in that price range. It's an absolute stunner. And listen, I don't want to like trigger a gold rush among you guys, but I do think this is a bottle to buy now. Uh, not only is it limited edition, but it's sure to go up in price over time. Personally, I bought a couple backups of it. Um, like I said, this is one of my recent favorites, not just in terms of quality, but also in terms of value. Highly recommended. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That is always appreciated. And of course, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried Buna 12 Cast Strength 2022? Have you tried the 2021? How would they compare? How would you compare this to the regular 12 year old? Share your thoughts down below in the comments. Also down below in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye guys.